Okay, all right. Welcome, 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 welcome to Open House Night. I am so excited because today I'm going to share my insanely valuable training to help childcare business owners just like you understand the biggest financial mistakes that they're currently making in their businesses. Now, I'm not talking about a few small deposit flip ups. I'm talking about the kinds of financial mistakes that could completely derail your business. These are the mistakes that are causing the childcare business crisis, where unfortunately, childcare has turned into the most broken business in America. In fact, ch financial childcare consultant Louise Stoney says this is an industry that literally can't generate enough money to survive. That's sad, right? So if you're currently making the seven mistakes I cover in my training today, then your chances of going out of business are even higher. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. In fact, it's really the opposite. Why? Because I want you to have the tools, the knowledge, and the resources you need to be as careful and financially smart as possible so that you don't end up as the next childcare business that has to close their doors. That would be absolutely heartbreaking for me to see, especially when it's all avoidable. And in this training, I'll share, I'll share how so. So if you would please stay tuned until the end, if you stay tuned until the end of this training, you'll get to access some exclusive training and bonuses that you will never see again and that can help you avoid the childcare business crisis. So please stick around so you can check that out too. Anyway, I'll share more on the childcare business crisis and how to avoid it in a minute. But first, let me introduce myself and act like my mama gave me some manners, like she taught me something. So have you been to one of our trainers before? This is a warm up, okay? This is gonna be very interactive. So if you have your notepads ready, and I hope you do, I want you to take this opportunity, answer our poll question if you've been with us before. If you've been with us before, thank you so much. We appreciate you. You always welcome to come back and bring a friend. And if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. And do please feel free to check out our YouTube channel because there's a lot of additional trainings that are available on our YouTube channel as well. So back into introducing myself. My name is Shanita Jones. I'm the founder of Jones Taxes and Financial Services. I love taxes and accounting, and my life's passion has been helping child care providers reach their maximum potential and decrease their tax liability. Over the last two decades, I feel, I feel old when I say that to him, but over the last two decades, I have helped hundreds of small business owners get past that confused and overwhelmed state and find their stride. But when I first opened up my accounting firm, I was in that same overwhelmed state myself so I can truly identify without judging. I was doing everything for everybody. I'm talking accounting, bookkeeping, tax, some admin stuff, everything. And I was pushing myself so hard the work that I love became my biggest source of stress and frustration. I wanted to help people, yet there I was pouring over every state, every federal, every industry's rules and regulations, making sure I didn't miss anything. You no, know, I knew IRS publications or anything that could help my clients' businesses. And then one day I asked myself, with a strong urge from my, one of my coaches, why am I doing all of this? You see, I became a, an accountant because of my aunt, my aunt Karen, my aunt Care Care. That's actually what I still call her being, you know, 21 plus 19, I still call her that. <laughs> um, she was one of my favorite people and I would go to her daycare and watch her work. And some days I had to help her pick up toys, take out the trash, wipe a few runny noses, but I love doing it because it made her smile. I also love doing it because I saw how much she struggled. 
She was born to take care of and educate these children. Very kind, very patient, God-fearing lady. Yet she would be wringing her hands through receipts and trying to figure out if there was enough money to pay her staff. And then maybe if it was something left over, she could pay herself. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna help her one day. And I did. But then I got sidetracked because I had to help the dentist, the bakers, um, the fireman. I was on YMCA and pretty much any business that you could think of, I was helping them. And it just didn't feel right. So by the grace of God, I went back to where it all started. I took it back to my roots and I became the child care CPA. And then a very interesting thing happened. The more childcare business owners that I helped, the better I began to understand why they needed my help and why they were struggling in the first place. Contrary to what some of my peers believe when they refer me their childcare business clients, it's not because they're not smart enough. They're just too busy putting out fires, working in the business, drowning in paperwork. It wasn't, it wasn't that they weren't smart enough. They were just, they were just busy. They were so busy working in the business that they couldn't work on the business. They were just caught up too much, stuck in the thick of it, not seeing the bigger picture, not knowing what to make it do, not, to, not knowing what to do to make it run like a smooth, well-oiled machine. Between the bad advice on the interweb and asking their friends, they were getting exposed to so many unnecessary risks. Some even got in trouble with the IRS, their counties, and their state authorities. Because whoever told them it was okay to just put all their employees on 1099s or go ahead and deduct your full mortgage and your loan and payment and not just the interest, those were not the right people to ask. And that's why I created this training, the seven biggest financial mistakes childcare business owners make and how to correct them. Because once I started sharing this with childcare owners, I've watched them turn their entire businesses around. I've seen them get out of debt, open new locations, hire more staff, but most importantly, get their lives back. All by learning the business side of childcare business and avoiding the childcare business crisis. So how could I keep all of this to myself? The answer is I couldn't which is why I put this, this training together. And once you understand these mistakes, you will be able to protect yourself against the crisis, the childcare business crisis that so many owners are currently facing in the US. If you have any questions for me throughout the webinar, you can feel free to drop them in the link. I'm sorry, in the chat box below. But um, if I can, I will take them as I go as well. Any that don't get covered tonight, I can blast out, I can send out an email and um, I'll have the question and the answer in there. Might take a couple of days. So we're talking about the seven biggest mistakes childcare business owners make. This is a recap of these lessons. So y'all got y'all pins, right? I hope y'all got y'all pins because you will be grading yourself. So I'll quickly run through these mistakes. If you identify with any of these mistakes, it is absolutely okay. Thank you so much for Voting, I'm going to go ahead and get that out your way. 40% of the people here today are new. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you. Okay, mistake number one, not separating your personal and business finances. And believe it or not, the IRS is not your main concern here. Number two, working for free. You deserve to pay yourself. Number three, not enforcing the give and take rule, not with the babies, but with your accounts receivable. Mistake number five, not taking advantage of proactive tax reduction strategies. Numero cinco, failing to classify your employees correctly. We're talking about the difference between payroll and 1099. Mistake number six, not having your financial thermometer on hand, not having financials. And we'll talk about what financials are as well. And last, but certainly certainly not least, and not last, it's just didn't, these are just the ones that make my top cut. Mistake number seven, not preparing and analyzing your budget 
to accurately forecast your income and your expenses. So some of you may already realize that you may be making some of these mistakes already. While I'm going through each of these mistakes, I'm going to ask you to grade yourself. You get an A, a B, or a C. No one is failing today, not on my watch, okay? So number your papers one through seven so that you can write down these areas. And once you take these areas and tell the truth, no one's gonna see your results unless you decide to hop over into the Facebook group and share because we can continue the discussion there if you like to. So no one's gonna fail, no one's going to judge you, but I want you to take this information, see this information so that you can use it to become a better business owner. So A is great job, I got this, I'm rocking it out. B is, uh, I'm, I'm good most of the time, but I, I have my moments. And then C is, I really need to see how I am going to fix this. So that's our grading scale. No one gets an F. Okay, mistake number one. To put it simply, commingling of funds is a fancy term to explain the combining of business and um, personal spending. It's more common than you might think. Have you ever paid personal expenses from your business bank account? Have you? <laughs> Have you ever paid business expenses from your personal account? See, it goes both ways. Then you might have commingled funds without even knowing it. And there are so many reasons why this is a bad idea. The number one place I'm seeing most of the co-mingling go on right now is in PayPal and Amazon. So that's a tip for you right now. Check, what are you doing with your PayPal and your Amazon? Oh, I love it. Y'all voting already and I ain't even asked the question yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a detour and tell y'all about this PayPal co-mingling. You see, PayPal is a bank account. Now they do have credits and loans, but when you have your PayPal bank account, I commend you for connecting your personal account to have that money come out of your personal, and then you got your business account for the business stuff. But what happens inside of that PayPal account is you see the personal transactions going out because PayPal is basically like a holding tank. Money comes in so that money can go out. Okay, so watch that PayPal account, okay? Another area I see Alyssa said credit card is her biggest offender. Y'all get in trouble with the credit cards because we start point hacking and point counting and point watching. And a lot of times it's on the personal part. And this is why the reverse commingling, where you do business stuff in your personal account, that is equally bad because you have expenses there that oftentimes do not make it to your tax return. So do you know what happens when you spend money for business and they don't go on your tax return? It's called paying too much in tax. So in some place, in some cases, co-mingling can legally, I'm getting serious now, it can legally make you be responsible for business liabilities. Check with your attorney. But if you have your business set up as an LLC or a corporation and you're doing personal things in there, there is the potential, check with your attorney, I am not one, <laughs> but there's the potential that you, your corporate veil could be pierced and now they can come after Nancy and not just Nancy's precious little children. So be careful with that. Commingling is also detrimental because it makes your tax preparation process much less accurate because it's always the chance that you're missing deductions like with those personal credit cards or the husband's account because husband's doing a project for the company and he's using his credit card, you know, like good husbands do to pay for things. If your husband wants to do that, you know, we love him. Thank you, husband. But get him an employee business card or something. Keep all, capture all your expenses. Co-mingling makes your tax preparation less accurate because oftentimes there's deductions that you're missing because they did not happen in your business account. On the other side, if you're doing personal stuff, 
and your business bank account. Now, you'll see no money in the bank and, and think, I'm not going to have a tax liability because I don't have any money. Wrong. Your profit is still your profit, whether or not you spend it. And that's what you're going to pay tax on. You can also deduct things in error that you shouldn't. Maybe they're not deductible. Or maybe you get an audit and then your documentation that you have is insufficient because these things aren't business expenses anyway. True story. I have a client. When she came to us, her bookkeeper, bless her heart. I got Texas people here, so y'all know what that means. <laughs> bless her heart. Her bookkeeper had personal expenses, personal hairdos. She literally wrote personal and put it on the PL. So when you finish, go look at your PL and check out for those things because you can't defend that in an audit. And when all of the funds from your business and personal life are intertwined, there's no way for you to really know how much money you as the business owner can afford to keep for yourself or pay yourself. I saw earlier in the chat that someone asked, um, how do we pay ourselves? We're going to get to that lesson as well, but you won't even know how much you can pay yourself if you are paying yourself in the form of spending personal things out of that business account. And if you are the executive director or the founder of a nonprofit, there is no place for personal spending or personal draw. If you have a C corporation and you're taking out personal expenses, doing personal stuff up in that business account, guess what? It's not a deduction, but you're gonna pay tax on it twice. Once, because the business can't deduct it. And then again, because you get a 1099 dividend in which you get the pay tax. But it's all good. It's the lower tax rate. It's lower than whatever your marginal rate is, but it's still paying tax. So commingling and how you pay yourself, that's all going to involve the structure of your business, how it's set up. And I, I beseech you, see, I'm going to get biblical on y'all. I beseech you, did you get this advice on how you're going to handle all of this from a qualified professional that knows your situation? Okay. So I want you all to go ahead and, um, oh, we voted on co-mingling because I, I put it up too early. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't. So um, co-mingling, if you could drop it in the chat box because that poll is not loading and that's okay. But co-mingling, tell the truth for shame the devil. This is number one. Are you co-mingling? Are you co-mingling? How good are you? A, I'm good. I'm disciplined. I'm not doing that. B, mm, I got some opportunity for improvement. And C, I have a whole lot of opportunity for improvement. And thanks be to God, I'm going to get my life together. So go ahead and grade yourself on number one. One of the things we help our clients with is how to pay themselves so that the need to commingle is minimized or stopped altogether. Why? Because if you don't, then it can lead to mistake number two. Working for free. If I had a dollar for every childcare business owner I talked to that told me they don't pay themselves because they can't afford to, I would have a whole lot of dollars, okay? You deserve to pay yourself. You're working for it. You deserve to be paid. I don't have to tell you that running a childcare business is hard. It looks glamorous. And the thought of being your own boss is exciting. But once the excitement has worn off and the bills are due, it can get very scary very quickly. But before you can deal with all those bills, you have to pay yourself. Far too often, we meet with providers that confess they're so busy working that they forget to pay themselves or they don't know how. We do have a video on our YouTube channel, How Do I Pay Myself? You might find it beneficial. And if you like to schedule a consultation about your specific situation, um, you will we'll have some information on how you can do that as well. But when we pay everything else before we pay ourselves, we're often forced to cut corners. So then this is why we end up commingling so that we can survive. You're not paying yourself, so you don't have any money. So you just spend it out the business and that's how you're surviving. And as we've already covered the fact that co-mingling 
Commingling is never good and it can have long lasting effects and far reaching adverse consequences, okay? You can always increase or decrease your pay as needed, but paying yourself should be a formalized and intentional part of your business. Now, how you pay yourself is going to depend on your business's structure, whether it's via payroll or it's a draw from your business bank account. So you might be saying, uh, this all sounds great, but I don't know where to start when it even comes to paying myself, but that's okay because we do. And we've helped many hardworking business owners get the pay that they deserve. So Maria said, why should we pay ourselves? We tax on all the profit anyway, it's hopeless. She didn't say that part, I added that part in. You should pay yourself so that you can understand how the business is really doing. How well is the business performing? Are you profitable? Guess what? There are a lot of people on this line right now that are not paying themselves. Their business is showing a profit, meaning your money left over was, there was money left over after your expenses were covered by your revenue. And you have dreams to move out of your business so that you can be a director or owner and not have to come in every day. With you not paying yourself, your business is not even built to be able to add another salary in there. With you not paying yourself, you're not paying into the system. Now, everyone does not belong on W-2 salary. This isn't the how, um, the how to pay myself class. Maybe we'll do one of those. But how you pay yourself is going to depend on your entity. So if you are a Schedule C, uh, doing business as a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, you probably do not belong on W-2 payroll, but you should still be formally writing a check to yourself, a Zelle to yourself, an ATM to yourself, having your own money, because that will help you be able to pay yourself so that you don't have to co-mingle. Now, you wouldn't dream of asking your staff to work for free, would you? Would anybody ask their staff to work for free? I'm sure I can't get one person that says yes. No, you wouldn't. So I want you to go ahead and we do have another poll. I want you to grade yourself, okay? No one can see your names on the poll. Can we all see the poll, okay? How well are you doing at paying yourself, okay? If you are paying yourself, great, you're an A. Sometimes you're a B. C, I am not paying myself and this needs to stop today because that one mistake is causing so many problems in my business. I'm not paying myself. So I'm commingling. I'm handling my life and my business. My profit and loss is probably inaccurate. It's showing that I have more money than I do. So now I'm going out and I'm signing leases and I'm, I'm expanding and I really don't have the revenue to cut it. And when am I ever going to be able to pay myself? So the results that are coming in, they're, they're, they're actually interesting. We have about three more minutes before the poll close. The results are very, three more seconds, I'm sorry. The results are very interesting because we're almost split evenly. 33% of the people said that they're doing a great job at paying themselves. We had 31% need some work to do. And 36% of us um, have a lot more work to do. Now let's go to mistake number three. Mistake number three, I suspect we're going to have less problems with mistake number three. Mistake number three is not enforcing the give and take rule. We got to keep that same energy we use with these children with their parents. When children are young, many of them have trouble learning to share with others. In time, childhood educators, with the help of parents, can teach children that you have to give some of what you have, your snacks, your toys, your space, to turn on the swings, if you want others to share with you. It's only fair. In my life, I've seen many childcare business owners successfully enforce this policy by having kids swipe toys. As a result, the children learn to receive something of value, that they must give something of value as well. Unfortunately, some children never learn that lesson, even before they grow up. And then they have children of their own. 
And then they enroll those children in your program. And these are the parents who will gladly share your time, your resources, but bicker about paying their fees. These are the parents who do these things and they probably wait until the last moment to pay you even when they don't. But your time is your most valuable commodity. You put a lot of time, effort, and emotion into building your dream. You are not just in it for the money, but you still need to make a living for yourself and your family. You would probably like to also reinvest some of your profits into your business, but you can't do this if you aren't paid in a timely fashion. I've worked with many highly profitable childcare centers and other businesses that have cash flow problems. This can happen even in large corporations. You've earned the money and you've put in the work, but you can't do a thing with the proceeds if you haven't collected them yet, right? Proper accounts receivable management will ensure that you're paid in a timely fashion. It will enable you to expand, hire staff, and alleviate some of the uncertainty about what your personal finances will look like. This is why it's so important to make sure you set the expectation that you need to be paid in a timely manner up front. And once you set that expectation, deal with it. So how can you ensure that you get paid on time? Well, late penalties are effective for some, but others consider it a small price to pay for the delay. Instead, you might wanna consider a discount for those that pay before a certain date and just build the late fee rate into your regular price for those who don't. They can still pay a late fee if they're late. Another solution is to make it easier for parents to pay you in the first place. I strongly suggest online payments, even if you set up automatic payments, if possible, that's great. And again, using that early payment discount as an incentive. So now I want you to grade yourself on mistake number three. Let's grade ourselves on mistake number three. Do we have a lot of outstanding receivables on the books that we are not paid for? A, I do a great job. I get all my money. B, oh, I have a good heart and I just want to work with people and I just want to help them. <laughs> um, C, I'm bad. I'm completely bad and I got to change. And you know what? I'm going to give you another tidbit here while the um, poll is coming in. You know what's happening right now in our country? What's happening right now is this tax season. And a lot of families with younger children, depending on their income requirements, a lot of families are expecting tax refunds. So one thing that we have some of our clients do that has helped them dramatically is we have a tax season amnesty where maybe we'll knock off a certain percentage to get that money and get that revenue in. You know what's also getting ready to happen? Summer camp. It's almost time to start getting ready for summer camp. So if we're not going to be able to keep the families because they won't do right, we can instead pivot and maybe increase our efforts for our summer camp. And then maybe we can retain some of those children for after schoolers. I saw someone say, um, oh, no pay, no stay. I like that. <laughs> I saw someone say they don't charge enough um, compared to others. So if you don't charge enough compared to others, you definitely want to um, look at your rates unless you're happy with it. If you're happy with the way your business is going, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. But if you're struggling with your finances and the dollars aren't making sense to you, then you might want to revisit that and make some changes. So um, and sharing our results, I am proud of us. There are only 10% of our people that said they want to do better. Um, well, 10% of our people that feel like they may be in trouble. 39% um, of us are kind of in the middle. And a whopping 52% said, no pay, no stay. Um, thank you, Lisa. I like that. I'm going to use that. Okay? So um, those are our results. We're going to jump right into mistake number four. Mistake number four. And these all build upon one another. Because if you aren't paying yourself, you don't have enough money. You maybe not collecting your money, so you don't have enough money. And mistake number four 
not having, not taking advantage of proactive tax reduction strategies, this is really difficult if you don't have a pre-planned, a preset, or any type of stable way of paying yourself because the different ways that you could pay yourself in your business are treated differently on your tax return. Now I'm about to quote Benjamin Franklin, but he once said, failing to plan is planning to fail. I think he must have spent a lot of time around children. Studies have shown that children and adults alike feel and function better when they have a routine. This is because having a routine promotes feelings of stability and structure. In fact, when your day is planned out and your plan is followed, you generally have less stress than you would if you didn't have a plan. Even if you take just a few minutes at the start of your day and mentally map out your daily agenda, even if you don't physically write it out on a formal to-do list, things will still flow much more smoothly when you have a plan to follow than it would if you had no plan. Really, your tax situation is no different. At the start of your business, you should meet with an accountant to help you ensure you're on the right track to be profitable and plan out together what that plan to profitability and sustain profitability and increase profitability is going to look like. Another reason having a tax plan is so important is because as a child care owner, your federal funding and licenses, they both have requirements that are based off of the tax information you provide in many cases. So falling behind in your tax filing could cost your business thousands of dollars and potential grants, maybe fines and penalties, and even worse, your business license. And we had one fellow Philadelphian on here, and she can tell you how, to, how that city will snatch up your license. They'll come pick it up, retrieve it from you. A tax plan not only helps you remain in compliance with the feds in your state, it also helps to eliminate nasty surprises at tax time. It keeps you on track with estimated tax payments, and planning ahead lets you see the after-tax implications of decisions you might make which in turn shows the real money spent or gained in the long run. If you opt to manage your accounting yourself, my advice is to get periodic checkups. Schedule a wellness visit for yourself as your business grows. Your business structure and tax structure may need to grow with it. And you don't wanna miss out on those tax savings by changing you, you, the tax savings that you would get by changing your agenda. On average, I help my clients reduce their tax bills anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000, just helping them implement just the very basic pro proactive tax reduction strategies. So you can get a lot of bang um, with a little effort, but the time to start is not April 15th, ladies and gentlemen. The time is to be thinking about it at all times. Tax season does not start when the W-2s roll out. Tax season starts, it never stops, it's ongoing. So are you taking advantage of tax pro proactive tax reduction strategies? If you are, that's awesome. If you are not, um, it's not too late. It's not too late. There are still some things that you can do. While we're talking about tax, I would be remiss if I did not tell you that today is the deadline to have your S corporation or partnership tax return electronically filed, e-filed, or you can do yourself a 7004 form and head to the post office. We are not filing any more um, extensions for today. Our people are all done, okay? So I can help our clients and I can help you reduce your taxes. Now we're gonna go to mistake number five. Failing to classify your employees correctly. As service-based businesses, Payroll is probably your biggest expense, right? And unfortunately, if you're like most people, you may have been given some very poor advice as to how to keep your payroll taxes down. You know, we also help business owners with IRS um, representation when they're in trouble with the IRS. And the number one reason that the IRS 
I see them posing levies and fines are due to payroll tax non-compliance and errors. One of the most popular myths that we work to dispel is the thought that business owners can decide if they're gonna make someone an employee or pay them as a contractor. I don't make the rules. According to the IRS, we do not get to choose how to classify our workers. The IRS has set forth very strict guidelines that have to be considered in making a determination. There's three basic categories that the IRS reviews to determine employee status. There's the behavioral, financial, and relationship test. You can read more about these tests on the IRS website, but you also want to be aware of the rules in your state. You may be using a payroll company, praise the Lord, that's great. But unless your payroll service comes with HR support or advice, your payroll company is probably not going to be able to properly advise you. They'll refer you back to the IRS website. And another place that you really want to avoid getting advice from, again, is people that tell you, well, this is how I've always done it. Go to irs.gov, free yourself, educate yourself. So why, why is it important for us to help you keep your payroll expenses down? In a nutshell, if you pay someone under the table or properly classify someone as a contractor, but they're an employee, you could become liable for all of the employer taxes that should have been paid as well as a portion of the taxes that the employee should have been paid. I know a young lady, I was her tax person. This young lady worked at a couple of childcare centers in, um, in Philly. And when I saw her name pop up as a contractor, I said, this girl, she was going around singing her sad song about she's getting this or getting that and couldn't be on payroll. And whenever she got fired, which she always did, she ran and filed for unemployment. When she filed for unemployment, you know what happened? Each of those childcare business owners got in trouble because she was supposed to be an employee and she wasn't, okay? So payroll tax penalties are among the stiffest that they are. There's not a whole lot of get out of jail free when you mess with trust funds because the government is trusting that you're gonna handle this process the right way. And I've talked to lots of business owners who have all said they had no idea they were doing anything wrong or how costly their mistakes really were. Most business owners are hardworking, honest people. They just want to do the right thing and would also like to save as little money and would like to save a little money in the process. So even if you were improperly advised and you did not know the right way to handle payroll in the beginning, it's not too late. One of the payroll specialists on our team will be more than happy to get you up to speed and compliant so that this is one less thing for you to worry about. We can also help you budget for those expenses so you can avoid any issues going forward. So now I'm gonna ask you all to grade yourself on mistake number five. How are we doing with properly classifying employees? A, we doing a good job, we understand the difference. B. It's a little gray, I'm not sure. I have some areas where I think it might be okay. Or C, mm, I'm glad my name ain't on this poll. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you, and, and I think we actually have, I actually do have some videos in the Facebook group. It used to be called Units. I don't know what they changed the name to since they're meta now or whatever it is. But um, I do have some videos under that tab in the Facebook group about employee contractors, um, the difference between the two, how to fix it, and um, if you had back payroll tax forms that needed to be filed, of course, there's support with that as well if you need that. So we have a few more seconds, and then I'm going to close the poll once we get to the 60-second um, point, but it looks like overall we're doing pretty good. 64% of us feels good. Um, the name of our Facebook group is the Child Care Profit Strategy Community, hosted by Shanita Jones, yours truly. Um, you can feel free to stop by the group. You can post, share, talk. Um, we're here for you. So these are our poll results, and we are going to hop on to mistake number six. 
Mistake number six, not having your financial thermometer on hand. So I'm sure you know, one of the easiest ways to tell if a child isn't feeling well is to take their temperature. Most of us, especially in the last couple of years, you can't walk in without something beeping your temperature, especially with the smaller children because they're unable to speak and tell you how they're feeling. As the owner of a child care center, your business should be treated the same way. When your business isn't performing as you believe it should, you need to have a means by which to take your business's temperature. So what's this business thermometer you can use to see if your business is doing? What, what, what are you talking about, Shanita? I want you to think of your company's financial statements as your business's thermometer. Your financial statements give you all of the data you need to quickly and easily understand what's going well, what's going wrong. Unfortunately, many child care centers put off bookkeeping and accounting, or they drop off a box of nonsense to a tax preparer that they only see once a year. And the problem with that approach is it doesn't give you any information about your business, at least not proactively in time enough to do something about it. We'll send links after the fact to those that need the link to the Facebook group, okay? So to get your thermometer, you must have a good accounting system in place to track income and expenses. Once your accounting system is set up and being kept up to date, an experienced CPA can use that information to create your financial statements. These financial statements can be used to find trends, project future revenues and expenses, compare yourself to industry standards, estimate tax payments so that you can plan and make well-informed business decisions with no guesswork. If expansion is on the horizon for you, you absolutely, positively, unequivocally need to have financial statements. The two most basic primary are your profit and loss and your balance sheet. And we do have a training where we go over those. We may be putting them um, out soon, um, revisiting them. So as a CPA, I can help you set up a profit-focused financial system so that you can grow your business while also being able to pay yourself the salary that you want and you deserve. I get questioned. How much should I pay myself soon as someone becomes a client? And my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> and the reason why is I don't know is because we have to first understand what you have and we first have to understand what's going out and what's coming in and what the true profit is. How much have you been already giving yourself as a draw? So it's a little, I know I make it sound easy, like, oh yeah, we just go back, this is how we're gonna do this. But it's a lot more thought that goes into it that one um, might think. And this brings us to question number seven. And the seven, wow, we had number seven already? <laughs> the um, seven financial mistake that child care owners make. And this one is the biggest one. But wait, we need to, um, how many of you have financials? Let's go ahead and grade ourselves on this. How many of us actually have financials? You can go put your hand on your profit and loss statement and you know how much money your business made through the end of February or maybe January since it's tax season. Maybe your accountant is under the desk crying right now and a little late with February. I totally get it. But do you have financial statements? When you get approved for that grant and they say, okay, as part of the grant, let me have your tax return and your profit and loss and your balance sheet for the last year. Can you provide it? When you get asked for that idle loan and they had you filling all them boxes, did you have numbers or did you have numbers? <laughs> what happened with them? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll now. We had it up for a minute and I'm gonna share the results. And it looks like 50% of us do not have financial statements. And that's okay because soon I will give you several ways that you can get yourself some. So 
how can we measure what we don't count? How can we count what we don't track? One of the most commonly requested services that we perform is budget preparation and budget review. A lot of people think that the purpose of a budget is to restrict your spending, um, take away all your fun and all your good stuff. That is not the case. It's actually further from the truth. Your budget is a powerful tool. It's your friend. <laughs> Without a budget, there's no way for you to know how you actually perform compared to how you planned on performing. And when our clients inform us that they're going into a new building, a new location, we actually tell them, uh-uh, ma'am, uh-uh, sir. We need to do a budget. I have a, I have a client, beautiful client, and they ended up getting an amazing building in a prime location. Everything was lovely and true. It was one simple problem. The only way that they could afford the rent was if they maintained 93% enrollment. And then that allowed them to cover the rent. They couldn't afford anything else. So had they had a budget, they would have never gone into that deal. And they told me, the attorney said it was a great deal. Yeah, the attorney said that the contract was right. The attorney does legal, the accountant does accounting. Now I do have a couple of friends that are CPAs and attorneys, but that's um, not as common. So your budget is so, so, so important. Without a budget, there's no way for you to know how you did compared to how you wanted to do. We were in our CABA class, and I'm, I'm gonna share more with y'all about that later, but we had a budget exercise that changed and saved someone's business and someone's life, okay? You can use your budget to help you increase profits, decrease your expenses, pick the right time to hire, or even plan for expansion. The possibilities and benefits of budgeting are endless. One of the key components of the budgeting process is to review your historical information. What does that mean? It means look at what you've been doing. If you wanna know where you're going and you wanna make sure you got the right way to get there, you have to look at where you've been, where you're coming from. This is yet another reason why it's important to have your accounting done timely and accurately. Because in order to better project and plan, we need to spend some time looking at what has happened in the past and use that information combined with what we know is coming up in the future. What are our plans? What do we want to change? What would we like to do? What would we like to have? How much would we like to pay ourselves? Clients that participate in our accountant and outsource CFO subscription programs get our expert assistance in their budget preparation process and also in the analysis of it. But don't worry about missing out. Um, if you're not a part of that, there is an opportunity that I'll share with you about how we can work together. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, I'd like you to go ahead and grade yourself on mistake number seven. How are you? Do you have a budget? Do you have a forecast? And now, when I say do you have a budget, I don't mean do you have some numbers written on a sheet of paper? Do you have some numbers written on a sheet of paper that you may or may not look at? Because having a budget is a, it's a package deal. You need to have a budget, but then you also need to have your actual. And you have good differences, just like you have bad differences. And one of the things that really separated clients when the year that happened that shall not be mentioned, <laughs> one of the things that really separated the weak from the strong was the budget. People that budgeted knew, and people that had finances, they knew, how long can I operate? What is my minimal cost to sustain operation? Okay, there's opportunities. People are leaving the industry. I would like to buy a larger share. Can I afford to do that? When can I afford to do that? I want to go to Hawaii. No, I really want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> but I want to go to Hawaii. When can I afford to go to Hawaii? It's not about saying, you can't have this, you can't have that. It's when can you have it without having to get money at non-ideal interest rates and prices? When can you get it without having to go through a lot of stresses? That is the, the freedom that you will get from budgeting. 
but you can't just budget to say you have a budget. You actually have to use it as a tool, okay? Budgeting is um, budgeting is a verb, okay? And budget is a noun. He is a person. He's name him Bob. Bob the budget, okay? Um, that's how much of an integral part of your life you'll want to consider making your budget. So these were seven of the many financial mistakes that we have seen. I hope that this has been enlightening so far. I say so far because we're not done yet. I hope this has been enlightening. This is a rundown recap of the mistakes, not having financials, not collecting your receivables, not doing tax planning, not properly classifying employees, not separating your business and your personal funds, working for free, and not analyzing and preparing your budget and your forecast. So I want to share with y'all three beautiful ladies we have here. I've already seen that one of them are on stage today. These uh, women are smart and each of them have a very unique story. You can actually see the stories um, that we have for them on the page. But I think I want to start with Ms. Dawn. If y'all caught the information that Dawn shared with us last week or the week before, it was invaluable. It's on our YouTube channel. She is a licensed therapist and she's also the owner of Camp Bliss Kids. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, she's not the owner. She's the executive director of Camp Bliss Kids, a nonprofit. And when we met Dawn, Dawn was, Dawn was nervous. Dawn did not understand finances. Her business was taken off. The camp was growing. And she was very concerned about all of the money she needed to spend to be able to facilitate this work. As soon as a large chunk of money had to come out, and then we actually changed her tax structure so that she could pay herself on payroll. And Dawn was traumatized, educated lady. That's not even all her credentials on there, okay? Dawn was so afraid of how am I going to be able to afford this? We talked her off the ledge. That's a joke that we have, which she doesn't find funny because she's a mental health professional. But we talked her off the ledge. We helped her set up with a budget and that frown she had turned upside down with a smile. And since she's been able to add multiple practitioners to her therapy practice, and she's also been able to do a lot of amazing work um, with her therapy dog and even with the camp that she has for children. And that's growing, expanding, getting all kinds of crazy contracts because she can hand them financials and they can hand her money. Let's go move over to Alana. Alana is the owner of We Care Child Care, and she's also the new director of the new organization, Welcome Solutions. And Miss Alana had actually been a private client of ours. She worked with us for years. We helped her with budgeting. Um, we did, she used to do her own books, but she decided to hand it off. Um, but Miss Alana, she is a phenomenal lady. She actually has some information that she might come share with us one day about her food program project. But anyway, Alana posted a testimonial. She said, Shanita, I hit my budget. So by us working together, she was able to get a strong handle on her numbers. And now she's expanding, I think, into her third location. She also has an after-school program. I don't want to misquote, but she's able to expand. She believes in the power of the budget. And let me tell you something else Miss Alana did. Alana used the things that we're teaching her in CABA and the principles she learned working with us. She's duplicated it and she's applying it across all of her businesses. So while we specialize in childcare, the information that we share with you, it will work. And um, two of our students, Desiree and um, Etta are here. Thank you. See, they love camping. We're like one big happy family, <laughs> one big happy chatty family. And then Desiree, I could almost cry talking about this. <laughs> Miss Desiree, um, working with Miss Desiree, and I won't give out too much of the details unless she, unless she posted in the comment box, then I, I'll tell you all about it. But one of the first things we go into CABA doing is we go into CABA and we create a budget. So we, pre we project out our whole year. Um, we learn how to budget, what needs to be included. And we saw when we got to Ms. Desiree, if we didn't make a move fast, she was going to lose $43,000 lost in her business. 
You know what we did? We turned that thing around. We developed a plan. We have a plan in place. And that could be so detrimental to your business because there's a lot of funding going on. A lot of people still have more money than they might have ever had in their businesses. And they're spending it on business, doing all the right things, payroll. But you know what? That money isn't increasing. It's decreasing. The cost of everything is increasing. So to God be the glory by the grace of God and through Kaba, Desiree is no longer on her way to failing or having a loss in her business. She's now able to turn it around and build a profitable business that she wants to make her mother proud because she, like many of you on this line, actually inherited that she has a passed down business. So we protect in legacy as well. Um, for years to come, maybe one day her granddaughter will also take over the family business. So I just love that stay in play. And um, even Miss Etta on here, she owns, she's in Kaba. I didn't catch her before we put these slide decks together. But Miss Etta is, um, she, when she started Kaba, she was nervous. She didn't want to break anything. We do teach QuickBooks as part of it. But see, this is not a QuickBooks class. This is a child care accounting and business class. And Ms. Etta came in and she instantly started doing analysis of which programs are profitable, which ones aren't profitable, how can I shape and change my business. We take spreadsheets and we make them fun. We take QuickBooks and we make it simple. No one gets left behind in Canva. I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm very proud of them. <laughs> so are you ready to take full control of your financial future, just like the ladies that we saw? Are you ready to run your childcare empire as the profitable, scalable business that it should be, all while avoiding stress and uncertainty? Are you ready to run your childcare business without the drama so that it can be scalable and saleable? You know, I'm always talking about saleable and scalable because we don't want a business that nobody wants to buy. Not that you have to sell it. You know, I'm not saying you have to sell your business, but I'm saying that you want a business that other people are going to want too because people want things of value. And you can do this without avoiding stress, uncertainty, and money drama. We don't like money drama. So I'm introducing CABA, the Child Care Accounting and Business Academy. This is the only business program created specifically for child care business owners. We will help you reduce your overwhelm, give you a step-by-step -step plan on how to shift your business to meet your goals. And you make this plan. Cabin ladies, do I make the plan or do I help you make the plan? You are in full control. And we help you implement business systems that will make working on your business easy. Now, this is not one of those courses that you're gonna take and never open again once you invest because we do hit you up. Hey, I haven't seen you this week, but this is a done with you. For now, it's a 12 month program to make sure you learn as you go and you are applying what you've learned as you're learning it, which means you're not forgetting. I know most of us do not have the time to go out and get an MBA. That's why I'll teach you all of the skills you need and we do it gradually. Once you graduate from CABA, the Child Care Accounting and Business Academy, you will have a box full of tools at your fingertips. And once you become a member of the Child Care Accounting and Business Academy, let me start telling y'all what you get. You get dedicated monthly group coaching calls and implementation that would be valued at 6,000. Every call will focus on the topics that each build upon another, helping you to add more skills to your toolbox like beads on a necklace. I'll make sure you walk away from each session with clarity and skill so that you can start applying what you've learned instantly to your business. We also have weekly open office hours. And if you have questions, I host or a member of my team hosts weekly hours where you can pop in and ask away. Now I've been a little selfish lately because I decided to bring in some expert guests on our Tuesday office hours 
because we also have live training with special guests. You learn from the best in business how to implement business systems, create social media presence that fills spots in your childcare, and creates the right image for your brand. We talk about the best practices for payroll. We have a retirement person coming to talk to us in insurance. And also we talk about staffing issues. There's a private VIP member community and a dedicated chat. We have dedicated um, group conversations that will connect you to the other VIP students, helping you to work together as a supportive community. And Ms. Etta is saying she loved it, it's hands-on and she can work at her level and at her pace. You get personalized membership. Don't worry, you won't be left behind. And I'm personally checking in with you to make sure that you are moving forward. <laughs> okay, you get access to our money-making instant mastermind network. And together, members of the Academy, they're worth millions of dollars. You will find camaraderie and sisterhood or brotherhood because, you know, we will accept men. We just don't have any in Cali yet. <laughs> and our community of successful, driven women. Don't carry the burden alone. Share, support, and be part of something great. You get access to my proven bookkeeping and accounting processes. It took me years to develop the systems and processes that I share with you at the Academy. It is like getting a key to a safety deposit box stuffed to the brim with gold. I can't even put a price on this, honestly, because it's my life's work. You also get four, because it's a 12-month program, one-on-one -on -one deep dives into your business's finances. It's like taking a pulse or a temperature to see how you're doing. Business owners are so used to thinking only about the annual reporting Yet when you look at their businesses quarterly, you often had a time to catch yourself before the fall, like in the example I mentioned earlier. Or you can surprise yourself, like Miss Alana, with how well you've been doing. And when you see something working well, guess what? You can keep doing more of it so that your business continue to grow. So once you become one of our members, now this is the total value, you'll have access to all of these things with the total value of 48,000. And even if all I did was to replace the potential master's degree that you would need to earn at a traditional university, you might spend 60 to 100K for that. Would it be worth it? If all I did was replace the need for you to pay for an accountant for the next five years, if you only had to pay 1K a month, that would save you 60 grand. Would that be worth it? If all I did was help you save a minimum in tax for the next five years, would that be worth it? So you can see that this is 100% worth 48 grand. And in fact, I was just thinking about the investments that I've made in myself, not including traditional education, but in this first year alone in 2022, this is March, I spent 60 grand devoting time skills and attention to becoming a bigger mentor, a better mentor with a bigger impact and constantly making sure I'm at the top of my game. However, I'm on a huge mission and I wanna make sure that this academy is as accessible as possible to as many driven and motivated childcare business owners as possible. So the total value is 48, the standing price will be 15, but we're not doing that today. And if you join CABA outside of this exclusive opportunity, it would be 15. But tonight, if you register, if you invest before midnight, your annual membership for the year is just $12,000. So this is the link. Thank you so much, Desiree. She said you will not be sorry. <laughs> this is the link. Um, I'm going to drop the link for you or someone, someone on our team will drop the link for you. Um, this is the link where you will be able to sign up. Oh, thank you, Alexis. And this is where you can register. So here's what you wanna do next. You wanna go to the link. This is the page. When you get to the link, you'll see a page that looks like this with a lady with a really cool hair. And you just click, yes, I want this. And that's how you sign up. This is, oh, look at Desiree. See, she learning. She said, it's tax deductible. Yes, it is tax deductible. Thank you, Desiree. Um, if you sign up today by midnight and you pay in full, 
is 12000 The event does end after midnight. And we do have a split payment if you want to pay 7 k this month and 7 k next month. That brings you up to 14 But that's not all. For the members who commit today, you also get access to some special bonuses. Bonus number one, you get a VIP day. And it's all about budgeting. That means we are going to do all about budgeting in one class, in one day, in one session, and you will leave equipped with your budget. We're going to catch you up, and you're going to catch up in our VIP training to meet where the rest of the, the rest of the group is. But it'll be fun. Don't be intimidated. Bonus number two. How to read the story your financial numbers are telling you. This is also part of our VIP day number two. You're going to get all of this information, be able to ask questions, um, and give your, give your feedback. And yes, those are the only two payment options. Num um, now, fast action bonus. This is another one. Before midnight, we're going to do something else. And I call this the secure the bag one-on-one. -on -one. The secure the bag one-on-one -on -one it's a personal tax assessment. If you're paying too much in tax, can we do something about it? If you don't understand what's going on with your tax, can we do something about it? Maybe you haven't even filed your tax. We can talk about that as well. We will do a personal assessment with you. Now today, today only, you get all of this. You're getting the monthly group coaching calls. You're getting the weekly office hours. You're getting live trainings with special guests. You get access to a private VIP member community. You have personalized membership, access to our Money Maker Mastermind Network, and wait until they come through. <laughs> Proven bookkeeping and accounting processes. And then you get the four one on one business deep dive. But we can't forget about the bonuses. We have all about budgeting, how to read your numbers, and exclusive member only discounts. That would bring the total value up to 55K. And Christine on my team is saying she learned a lot because I actually use this same material to train my team. So if you get in before midnight, the pay in full bonus, that's saving you three grand right there. And then the fast action bonuses, the secure to one, one on one, um, personal tax assessments as well. And the link will be in the comments for you to take. And we have room. Um, for about 10 people. So if you want to get started now for just 12K, that's the link right there. And we have a couple of videos. I don't know if they will play. <laughs> um, I don't know if they will play, but the videos have been shared on social. Um, but this is Crystal. Crystal is another one of our CABA members that I didn't um, tell her story. Um, Crystal is such a sweetheart. I love them all. Um, but if you listen to Crystal's story, I think a lot of you can identify with her. She has been in business for 30 years running her childcare business, and she didn't have as tight of a handle on it as she would like to have had. And she said that she had feelings of shame and embarrassment, frustration, confusion, and now she is seeing the clarity through the fog, um, and she's sharp. And Alana, she hit her, her profitability numbers for the first month in Cabin. And she wasn't really surprised because she budgeted for it, right? She forecasted for it, but um, she was really proud. If you could have saw her eyes light up sharing that, it just worth gold. <laughs> so imagine with me for a moment, just for a minute, imagine with me. Take a moment and imagine what your life would look like if you got these same results for yourself. Imagine walking into your office and you are feeling in complete control. No matter what the day throws at you, what shows up in the mail, you are calm and confident knowing exactly how much money your business is making, how much money is in your bank account, and how bulletproof your financial situation is. You're also excited because now you've got proof that you're not just someone with a big heart who loves kids, although that is beautiful. I thank God for you. I used to be a kid. <laughs> but if you're not on a path that you know you are, look at your grades. You've graded yourself. Is it time to make a change? I think it's time to make a change. Now, 
It's the time for you to decide. You with us? So does anyone have any questions? I know we unpacked a lot of material today. And I hope that something that I said was helpful, useful to you, was able to help you in your business. Do we have any questions? And I know I hit a lot of them um, on the way out as I was talking. Oh, I'm so happy you are here. Um, yes, it is 100% tax deductible. The class is very hands-on um, and no one is, and we have a lot of fun. We're not just counting, we're not just over there counting. We actually are having fun. Um, we make it fun. So, no, Chloe, you do not have to be a part of CABA if you would like to work with our firm. We do offer, um, we do offer private done for you services as well. Um, Anyone interested in that, we can definitely get you some information and we can hop on a call and we can find out what's going on and how to best help you. So absolutely, we, we are still taking um, private clients. Okay, and um, just so you know, that's a great question, Chloe, actually. Several of the members in Canada, we also have our remote learners. <laughs> Our remote, I call them remote learners because they, they prefer to watch the training on their own and ask questions in. So we do have some remote people. Um, I'm sorry. We do have some remote people that most of our students do have accountants. We actually have in the group, I think three of the companies represented where they're accountants. So even though they have an accountant, they want to understand. They want to understand, get behind the numbers and understand what the numbers are saying to them. If they're given a report, they want to be able to understand what that report says. They just value their time um, more, than the, more than the money. So we do have, um, most of our students actually have accountants, whether it's us or someone else. So you can absolutely still learn. We do work with nonprofits, Charmaine. We take nonprofits and for profits. We work with some um, home. Is there a home private a home provider enrolled? We do have a, a couple of home providers, but there's a few things where we go off and we do things a little bit different for homes due to the time space percentage. So you and if anyone else on that track are home providers, we would just get you together and um, cover that. So yeah, we we um, we don't discriminate against home providers. Um, okay, <laughs> so I'm reading the comments. So again, if you guys come up with any additional questions after the fact, or you have any questions about CABA, CABA you can definitely let me know. Chloe, um, some Chloe, um, someone will actually Christine, if you could send Chloe the information. Um, that would be good on um, the child care discovery calendar. That would be good. So yeah, so being a home provider, business is business. A lot of people have convinced you or convinced us that because my business doesn't look like your business, that we're different. We're not. A lot of people have convinced us that because we're child care businesses, we're different. And we are in some respects, but in a lot of respects, we're not. You deserve to have the same type of financial order in place as any other type of industry. And then further within childcare, whether you're a home or a group, you still need the same financial statements, access to the same information, even if your desire is to remain a home provider. Um, so that's completely, that's completely okay. Um, so you could still uh, register from CABA, benefit from CABA and learn. There's actually a lady on our YouTube channel, one of our clients. She was one of the first home providers that we worked with. And she tells the story. Her goal was to expand of how she, we were able to help her get into her first center. And now I think she's soon to move in. Well, she just got into the second one and she's getting ready to go for location number three. So we all start, we all start from somewhere, right? Okay. So again, I thank you so much. If you have any questions, 
the best place to find me is in the Facebook group. You can always post um, and let me know. And there will not be a recording. The recording is being streamed into the Facebook group. It will come down at midnight. So if you need anything, just let me know. I'll be in touch. And remember, y'all stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Bye-bye.